Hello everyone and welcome to our blog. My name is James Cuervo and I am your Revit Senior Trainer here at Digital Drafting Systems. Today's topic is how to better capture design intent through the use of formulas in dimensions. The design intent in this exercise is, is to maintain a width ratio between all of the involved spaces or rooms. For this purpose, we will be using one small meeting room, a large meeting room, and two corridors. The proportion ratio with the small meeting room is 75% of the large meeting room, and the corridor is 50% of the small meeting room shall be handled through dimensions. Let's begin. As you can see, we have a very simple design here. We have this area here, which is eventually the corridors. We have this larger area here, which is going to be our large meeting room. And this one here is going to be our small meeting room. First thing we need to do is go ahead and define the dimensions that are going to tell us what the width of this each is. Here's my first. Here's my second. And this section here, I don't want to do a string dimensions. I want to do individual dimensions. It doesn't really work with string dimensions unless you break them up. So we just want to keep it simple and do it this way. Now that I've got all my dimensions laid down, let's go ahead and define what would eventually be our corridor. So that would be this one here. We go ahead and open this up. We have no dimension, no parameters made. So we need to create one. Call this one corridor width. Okay, one thing you have to remember, this is all going to be case sensitive. So remember, case sensitive, say okay to that. Once that's being created and assigned, we'll go ahead and tell, pick this one and assign it to that. You'll notice that the automatically start to change to whatever it is that you need to have assigned to it. Second, then we'll go ahead and define the large meeting room. Oops, large meeting room width. Okay, say okay to that. And this one's going to be our small meeting room width. Say okay to that. Now they're all labeled. You'll notice that each one of them now has a little pencil mark next to it, meaning it is a parameter. Now it's not just a dimension. Once we have all of them in place and assigned, we select one and we go to the little pencil. This brings up the parameter editor. Okay. Here, we're going to create a very specific uh, proportion here for the small room, saying that this small room will be 75% of the large room. So this is written this way. First of all, I like to do it this way because it's a little bit easier to make sure that my spelling is correct. Okay, this is space, asterisk, meaning times 75%, 0.75, and apply. And okay, you'll notice that this is now 75% of that one. So when I change this one, its value to let's say 15 feet, you will notice that everything is being done in proportion now. The last one is going to be our corridor. Let's go ahead and say edit. And we're going to say that the corridor, once again, we're going to steal something. Go to modify, grab it so we are assured of their spelling. And we say corridor equals small meeting room width times 0.5%, which would be 50% of the small meeting room. We'll say apply to that, and we'll say OK. You'll notice that each and every one of the items that are actually labeled or added the parameter corridor changes. So if I want to change all of this and maintain my proportion ratio, I just come back to the editor, tell it that this is going to be 25 feet, not 15 feet, say apply it, and all things are now changing proportionately. As you can see, it is not a hard thing to maintain proportional ratios using dimensions in Revit. 
and in this way we can better capture design intent. This has been James Cuervo, your Revit specialist here at Digital Drafting Systems. Till the next one, thank you for watching.